Hello, YouTube. Um, welcome to my workshop. Uh, this is Beauty and Wood Turnings. I wanted to make some videos. I'm starting out in, um, certainly not starting out in woodworking by any means, but starting out in wood turning. So, uh, recently acquired a lathe, uh, making some interesting items on that lathe, and really, I've gotten hooked. If you're going to turn wood on a lathe, obviously you need wood. The easiest and cheapest and most effective place to get that, obviously, is down trees. Maybe your neighbor's tree died of a fungus. Maybe there's a tree down the street that, uh, you know, blew down in a storm. Maybe, maybe someone's having one taken out just because. You're going to need a chainsaw. If you're like me and you live in the suburbs and you have to process all your wood in the garage, it's not a really great thing to have a gas chainsaw out there because you get a lot of fumes, you get a lot of noise. Um, you know, my house is 100 feet from the neighbors. Um, I live in Michigan, so there's six feet, of, six inches of snow on the on the ground outside. It's pretty cold, probably single digits. So it's not something you want to do. Um, you know, running a chainsaw with a two-stroke engine inside a closed garage. So. The logical thing to do is to get an electric chainsaw. But electric chainsaws, there's, I'm calling it a dirty little secret, it's not dirty and it's not particularly secret, but there's a particular thing about chainsaws, uh, electric chainsaws, it's very not uh, well known and, and it's, it's actually hard to come up with on research. There's a couple of oblique references to it, right? But if you want to turn a large piece of wood, you need to be able to cut a large chunk. Uh, which means a fairly sizable uh, piece of work that you need your chainsaw to okay. do. So this is the drive sprocket. Now this is the sprocket that drives the chain. This is the thing that turns the chain that makes it bite into the wood. And what I want to show you are the teeth. And it's, it's a little difficult to see. Um, but you can see down near the bottom of that those are the the remaining teeth the flat areas above those teeth are ground off they no longer work so this particular uh sprocket won't turn the chain now you can see i i i tried to um press this shaft out and it obviously didn't work uh, but this part is made of plastic and many 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 chainsaws out there these parts are made of plastic. It's actually kind of difficult to find which ones have a metal drive gear. Um, in the case of this particular Homolite, this shaft on the replacement part is actually a quarter of an inch longer. So the replacement part impacts the chain tensioning bar, um, and it makes it makes the uh, the chain or it makes the the chainsaw inoperable. So there's really not a way to fix this. And even if you can fix this, this part would have cost me more than I paid for the chainsaw. Okay, so what's the solution? Well, um, there are a couple of chainsaws out there that actually do have uh, some really, really nice features. Um, the Makita is probably the best one you can get. All the reviews say that um, it has the best motor. Um, it's built for really heavy duty cutting. It's also about $250. A uh, bit more than I really wanted to pay for an electric chainsaw. I may end up with a gas chainsaw at some point. Um, so this is my solution. This is the Oregon uh, CS1500 self-sharpening 18-inch electric chainsaw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an unboxing video. And um, hopefully um, we'll discover this chainsaw together. Okay. Um... Let's open this thing up and see what's in it. Okay. So it looks like it comes all pre-assembled. Okay. We've got a better view of this now. Um, this inner ring here is actually what uh, screws onto this shaft, right? So there's a nut here that screws onto this shaft. This outer red ring is what does the tensioning. And here's how it does it. 
it actually interacts with this, which is screwed to the bar. Okay. Now, here's the piece that is metal. This piece, the gear inside that is metal. Um, now the really, really cool feature of this particular chainsaw is this guy right here. This is the sharpening stone. So this allows you to um, sharpen while the chainsaw is running. The other thing I wanted to show you before we uh, put some oil in this is these teeth. If I can get this to focus. These are not your normal chainsaw teeth. Um, yeah, I think that looks. So you can see that edge there, and they are razor sharp, I can tell you that. Um, instead of sharpening the inside of that tooth like you normally would, uh, normally you would run a, chain, a, a file along the inside of this. But these are set up so that this top piece, this is what the um, what does the cutting. So that's why you can have this lever that does the sharpening, right? So Next stop is to take this thing out into the garage and start processing some wood. Right. So like I said, it's really cold here in Michigan. Uh, nice to be able to do this in the garage. Nice to have a chainsaw that you can do this in the garage. Um, so I'm gonna process this piece of wood right here and you're gonna see the first cut. So as you can see, it doesn't take long to process the bulb line. This thing's probably eight or ten inches uh, deep, eight or nine inches in diameter. Uh, that's a big piece of wood. So I highly recommend this chainsaw. Uh, it does a really good job. Um, obviously, this is the first cut, so I can't tell you how long it will last. Uh, but all the reviews are really good. So thanks for watching. If you'd enjoyed this video, uh, click the link to subscribe or, uh, or just like the video. Have a great day.